Hello and welcome to the channel. So ZWO are well known for their deep space astrophotography and planetary cameras and also the very popular ASI air device. But today ZWO have announced a new harmonic equatorial mount. But before we dive in, let's just go back a few days. So around mid-December, a picture appeared on various forums and social media platforms that showed an unusual mount being used. And it was unusual for seven reasons. Um, the first one is the mount market is relatively small. And whilst I'm no mount spotter, this wasn't a mount that anyone or myself recognized as being from an existing vendor such as Rainbow Astro or Crooks. Number two, the size of the mount and the payload it's carrying, that payload is big and heavy. And that would normally need a reasonably sized EQ mount to carry it. And also notice there's no counterweights on the other side of the mount. So this could only mean one thing, it's a harmonic driven mount. And more on that soon, I promise. So speculation turned into rumors that this was potentially an unannounced ZWO mount. Now, a few days later, ZWO put out on various social media platforms that we're going to be announcing a new product on December the 24th. And again, a lot of speculation started as to this could be a new camera, possibly a rotator. And then also we pointed at the image of this unidentified mount that we saw earlier. So fast forward to today, and indeed the speculation of it being a mount were correct, and it also being a harmonic driven mount. So let's get what's the big deal about it being a harmonically driven mount out the way. And then I'm gonna go through the specification of the mount and there's a few things that I've picked up from the specification that I want to go through. So traditionally motorized go-to EQ mounts are driven by motors that can have belts and gears. This is just by their very design. The gearing will suffer from something called backlash. Hopefully this image, this video will show you what backlash is. And whilst you can tune this and adjust things mechanically, just by the very fact of how gearing works, there will always be an element of backlash. And we all know that backlash is generally bad for long exposure deep space astrophotography. Trust me, I speak from experience. So what does a harmonically driven mount do differently? Well, this animation again should help. And whilst I'm no expert in the harmonic drive field, it's clear to see that because of the engagement of the teeth is temporary in nature, there is no concept of the teeth moving forwards and backwards to engage the drive shaft. So this leads to effectively zero backlash or very little backlash. Harmonic drives can throw heavy payloads around like a rag doll, hence there's no need for a counterweight to, to a degree. Um, however, I would be skeptical about how much you could actually load up on a harmonic mount before you do actually need counterweights. There's also the risk of a rig tipping over as well because we can't stop gravity. So over onto the ZWO website, we can see the name of the mount is called the ZWO AM5 Harmonic Mount. Now let's take a look at the specifications and a few of these things that I've picked up on that I want to draw your attention to. So let's go to the chase. The first thing we all want to know about is the price. So the price is currently $1,999. And there's a little bit of a deal going on here because the actual price of the tripod is $299 but they're doing like an early bird discount where you can basically get the mount and the tripod together for about a saving of $300. And it looks like it's gonna be available in April, the first batch. So as with anything right now, there's a worldwide shortage of electrical components. So uh, it's anybody's guess to, as to how easy it will be to get hold of one of these. Now with that price in comparison to, I'll say the two main competitors in this market, Crooks and Rainbow Astro, um, it's significantly cheaper than both those two, but that could be because of some of the reasons I'm going to go into later on or very shortly. So the Crooks one is around, I think about $3,800, $3,900 and the Rainbow Astro seemingly around the same sort of price. So let's go down into specification. We'll cut through all the marketing blurb. Um, obviously it's quite a small amount. You've got your altitude adjustments and your azimuth adjustments here there's no sign of where the counterweight would go but one would assume it would be at the back end of the mount and then uh, we've got the payload capacity so without a counterweight it's claiming up to 13 kilograms and with a counterweight up to 20. this brings me to my first point that i'm concerned about is the carbon fiber tripod that they're showing that you can buy with this i would question whether that would be capable of holding 20 kilograms sufficiently 
I'm hoping that the bottom of this mount they have made universal and you could in theory attach it to maybe a Celestron or a Skywatcher or another well branded mount that is a lot more well appears to be a lot more secure obviously uh, we'll have to see what the reviews come in when it comes out but that's just my thoughts at the moment the second concern I've got is also on this page it's this comment here of harmonic drive speed reducer which I understand why they're having to do that but then it mentions a synchronous belt now I've checked with Rainbow Astro and Crooks and I find no mention of them using anything to do with whatever a synchronous belt is that does slightly worry me as to why maybe we've got a, a price reduction of, of nearly up to two thousand dollars compared to the other uh, mounts so Again, we'll just have to see what, what that actually turns into and what that means. I may reach out to ZWO if we can get some clarification. Whether they'll reply to me, I don't know. Um, so there we get a picture of what a traditional mount would need in terms of county work, counterweights. Uh, it goes back into the mount body again. It talks about the harmonic uh, speed reducer. And they're claiming a guiding accuracy of 0.5 to 0.8 arc seconds. I'm presuming they mean unguided. So in other words, with no PHD2 or whatever software you're using, that in theory, you would get this precision without providing additional guiding. And if that's true, that's, that's, they're, they're very good numbers to do it unguided. Another nice feature is each of the mounts has been measured for its periodic error. And I'm presuming you'll get in the box some kind of graph that will show you what the periodic area of the mount is and there's probably a threshold of where they won't uh, manufacture or they will send back into the assembly line the manufacturing process any mounts that don't meet a, a certain tolerance that would be my guess so again an, another uh, nice feature a lot of mounts that we know from Skywatch and Celestron are effectively thrown out of the factory and it is a little bit of a lottery as to whether you get a good one or a bad one so a, a little nice touch from ZWO there doing that now on to, there's a couple of pictures here. This is another worrying point here. There's a comment here that says that this image was, it's been zoomed in, but it was taken with 130mm APO with 900mm focal length. And the image scale for that is, is approximately one arc second per pixel. And they're saying that that reaches the limit of the mount. Thus, when ph photographing, photographing, photographing DSO objects, we recommend you don't use telescopes longer than 900 millimeters. There was some confusion I've seen on some forums already saying, well, they've got a Celestron C11 mounted. But if you actually look at that, it's actually got what looks to be a planetary camera on there, which obviously when you're taking planetary images, you're not taking long exposures. So my thoughts are at the moment is if you're going to throw something like a refractor, or a Newtonian on there and doing some deep sky imaging, or even, even a, an SCT, um, you're going to be limited as to what the uh, exposure lens is going to be. Again, I don't think that those uh, limitations uh, are documented against Rainbow Astro and Crooks. Um, so again, we'll just have to wait and see. We've got the weight of the mount, which is important to some people. So it's coming in at about 5 kilograms, which makes it very portable. That's obviously without counterweights, should you want to get counterweights for it. And then it talks about the load capacity, 13 kilograms without a counterweight and up to 20 kilograms with. And it shows here, this is the confusion people are saying, saying, well, hang on a sec, you said 900 millimeters a minute ago. If this is a C11, that's well over 2000 millimeters. But you can see that it's got a planetary cam at the back of it. So um, I think that's why they're showing that picture is that it would be fine for taking pictures of Jupiter and Venus and, and, and the moon, because you're going to be doing short exposures. It goes through a few more things. You can see there is some kind of peer extension available um, as well on top of the tripod because that isn't shown on the original picture. We've got how it works. Now, we come down to a section where I'm not a big fan of this. So it's got a laser for quick polar alignment. So obviously lasers are dangerous and they have said that this function is still to be determined according to the relevant laws and regulations and policies I'm never a fan of people who point lasers into the sky I understand why they do it in some countries lasers over a certain power are banned rightly so 
and uh, there are some idiots around who, who find it funny to point lasers at aircraft pilots. Um, so what this will actually look like in the country I live in, in the UK, I don't know. Um, it, obviously it will be easy to disable it from, from a manufacturing point of view. Um, but again, just something I don't think is necessary and is a little bit gimmicky. They go into the wireless control, so this comes into, sort of dovetails into my last uh, moan point, if you want to call it that. They're obviously pushing this with the ASI Air, and it will be a, a perfect complement to the ASI Air, but there's been no mention on the announcement today of any support for things such as ASCOM. I would find it very difficult to believe that they wouldn't release ASCOM drivers for it because they would be immediately limiting their market to ASI owners, uh, sorry, ASI Air owners. Now that might be a decision that they want to actually try and drive people down and sell more ASI Airs. However, I just think that it would be a step too far. And whilst it will work with the ASI Air, which has been confirmed on today's release, I think they will release ASCOM drivers at launch for it, but again, that's just my my own personal thoughts. Um, this last section here is quite interesting. Um, so anybody who knows how a harmonic mount works, there's no concept of clutches as such. So when you've got your, your mount packed in its home position, you've got the clutches tightened up. That mount is going nowhere, it's not going to move unless you give it some real force. So with a harmonic mount, what happens is, it effectively uses brakes. If you were to take this harmonic mount and pull the power out, what would happen is both the RA and the deck access would just basically start to flop down over its own accord according to gravity. So what they're saying here is that if you lose power, they will apply a brake to stop that from happening. It's also useful for obviously storing it because you don't want to, well, some people use, uh, have their, their rigs fully assembled all the time, such as me. Um, so you you want some way of being able to basically store this assembled and, and have brakes on and it comes down to something I spotted in the specifications which will come on to in a sec for that. So there's the, about the integration with the ASI Air and it's this. So on the drive for RA you'll mo notice it goes through the harmonic stepper motor and what it is blah 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 and it says plus a brake all good. It basically says there's no brake on the deck axis. So again, I don't know if that's just an omission. Could be why it's cheaper than the other harmonic drives that are available. Um, again, just my speculation, but I'm slightly worried that there's no brake on the deck axis. Oh, we've got Losmandian Vixen dovetails, all nice and good. Power supply, standard 12 volt up to three amps, all good. So, and then mechanical design. So what, what are my final thoughts? Well, I'm quite excited, but I'm certainly not gonna be an early adopter, I don't think. Um, I do like the idea of a harmonic mount. Uh, I know Quiv the Lazy Geek I think he had a Rainbow Astro about a year ago and he ended up sending it back due to, uh, I'd have to dig out the video, but I'll put a link in it as to the issues he had and that was with the Rainbow Astro one. I really want to see what people think of it before I make a decision on whether it's something I want to go down. The portability side of it doesn't really uh, interest me because I only image from my back garden. Um, but I do like the idea of the uh, accuracy that this potentially may give me. Uh, and the ongoing guiding challenges that I know you, you will all have faced in the past. So it's exciting times, ZWO going into a new market. Um, we'll just have to see what happens when April comes and we see the first adopters and I'm sure there'll be a ton of reviews come out at that time. So hopefully you found this helpful. As I say, it's just my thoughts today, right now. Um, I'm not affiliated with ZWO. Uh, I'm not ZWO bashing, I have ZWO kit myself and I, I've actually loved what I've had so far so I just picked up on a few things, I just wanted to just highlight them to you so as ever, uh, clear skies everybody, hope you have a good Christmas and a good new year and I will see you sometime next year.